the interconnection between Nigeria's seemingly intractable security problem and the cumulative effect on the economy and the standards of life of the people has been described by many watchers of the political scene as a vicious cycle that will require nothing less than a complete cessation of hostilities to break it. There also seems to be an unspoken understanding that even when that elusive peace is attained, for things to get better, the first have to get worse. We'll now be joined to discuss all of this by our guest in our Abuja studio, Dr. Emmanuel Anoliefo, who is President Change Africa Network. He prefers to call himself a philosopher, who has the mandate of God to provide the alternative development knowledge that will solve Africa's develop, uh, development crisis, beginning with Nigeria. And he has committed over 30 years to the pursuit of this mandate. He will also be talking about the tendency of African leaders to prioritize political capital over people-friendly governance. Dr. Anoliofu, welcome to the program. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you very much. Yes, Dr. Anoliofu, good to have you here. Good morning, sir. Yes, the effect of insecurity. It's my pleasure. Thank you. The effect of insecurity on economic growth. And just before you came on site, we had been discussing uh, Nigeria's economic growth and IMF's uh, projection that we may be down to a 2% growth rate, uh, which is uh, something that all of us uh, should worry about. But although IMF didn't cite insecurity, we know that, of course, there is uh, almost a causal connection between insecurity and the development process. What do you think is the big problem that we face in Nigeria? Is it leadership or, or just terrorism or external factors? Where do you think the real problem is? Uh, let me start by saying that uh, the first problem we have is the, pro the difficulty of understanding what is the problem. That is the, that's the, main, that's the first problem. We have difficulty in understanding what the real problem of our society and economy is. Because if you don't understand the problem, there's no way you can even understand how to address it. That is the main problem. If you recall, the issue, the, the issue of security is actually the, the consequence of the problem. It's the consequence of the failure of the economy. And the failure of the economy has been established since between 1999 and 2005. The IMF, the World Bank, they were all involved in this study. But I'm surprised that they are still talking about the economy growing when actually we don't have an economy. Nigeria is a trading outpost. It's a, a market for global industry. Nigeria is not an economy. So when you begin to talk about Nigerian economy in the terms of growing or not growing and all of that, you miss the point. This issue was established in 1999. By the, that was the high point of the 1999 economy report on Africa. We adopted the wrong concept. And the other concept is what we have continued to operate in this day. And there's a consensus between 1999 and 2005. There was a consensus that unless Africa adopts the alternative concept, there's no way we can make progress. Economic development is a design of God to sustain human beings on earth. It is guided by natural laws. There are no middle ground about it. It's either you understand it and then you walk in the light of what is right, or you, you don't understand it, and then you, you, know, you go wrong. That's exactly what we are facing. The, the, the security crisis is essentially the outcome of the failure of the economy over the years. So that's the problem. We are, we, are, we are not even addressing the economic problem. We are confusing economy with economics. We are, business is not the same thing as economy. Business is only the platform to put the product of the economy to the service of consumption. So we are not addressing the, the problem of the economy because we don't understand what the economy is. So that's the main problem. We need to understand this problem so we can address it. Uh, it's not a difficult thing to address the economic problem. So that's where the problem is. It's not about whether it's leadership or, or followership or otherwise. The problem is that the current education does not have any lesson on economy. So we have no idea what the economy is. We are just pursuing the, the economics agenda without understanding that where the problem is. So the first thing is for us to understand what the problem is so we can address it. It's a simple problem. We have virtually everything we need to address this problem. But we need to understand the problem. This is the critical issue. It doesn't look as if it's a problem, but it is a problem. 
Okay, doctor. Now, the concept that you started off speaking about was neocolonialism, really, which, of course, we know is a serious problem across Africa today. So how do, how do you propose we overcome that? And what I wanted to really get into you with is also just this idea of this coronavirus and having a reduction on oil prices and also insurgency fueling a lot of or having a detrimental effect on the economy right now and the effects that that is having. Now, the CBN are confident that we won't have to drop our foreign reserves or anything uh, until next year, or devalue our currency, sorry, until next year. However, with the way things are looking in the economy now, it looks as though we may have to devalue our currency sooner than that. Well, at least that's what a lot of economists currently think. What is your take on that? Do you think that we're going to experience a devaluation of our currency this year based on the economic shocks that we're facing? Or is this a problem that we're not going to have to face until next year, as is being proposed by the CBN, or even later? Now, now, now the issue is not about devaluing the currency. Once we run, so once, once there's a crisis in the, in the, price, in the uh, prices of crude oil, naturally we have to devalue the currency. But that's not the issue. The issue is how, how do we get the economy on the right track? We need to restructure. The, we need to create the economy. That's the first thing. Because if you restructure the economy, if you devalue the currency without addressing the problem of the economy. There's, you can't make progress. We have devalued the, economy, the currency several times, and we have not made much progress. So the first thing is to understand what the, exactly is the problem. Then we can now re work on the economy. Then if you devalue the, econo the currency, then you, know, you get an adjustment that can get the economy uh, you know, up to uh, uh, you know, uh, one step above the primary resource trap. So we can now begin to talk about making gains from the devaluation. But if you don't do that, you, you, the first thing is to understand the economy, the, the problem. The problem is that the concept we are, we, and let me put it the way the 1999 Economic Report on Africa put it. I think it, it, it makes a better sense there. He said we, have, we, we don't predicate economic growth on microeconomic stabilization policies and infrastructures alone. That's the bottom line. The, the, it's the real capacity that grow economy is the human element and the system that converts human capital capacity to, the, to the domestic products. So we need to understand the problem. The first step is understanding that, one, the development concept we, we are adopted from the onset and which we have continued to operate is fundamentally deficient. This issue was settled by the 1999 Economic Report on Africa. That's the first thing we understand. The second thing is that we have to access the alternative concept. Let me give you one simple example to, to make you understand the problem we are facing. Because so many people say it's leadership, others say it's infrastructure, others say it's, it's uh, roads, it's power and all of that. These are, these, these are all the consequences of the problem. The United States was faced with the kind of problem we are facing in the 1930s. They had everything, all the conventional capacities were all in the right shape. But they were not able to, solve, to help America out of that problem until John Kennedy came up with the alternative concept. Then this concept was put to pro-national engagement. At the end of the discussion, a consensus was reached on the context of the new order. Then the government adopted it, and it got America out of depression. What the problem we are faced today is far more complicated than the, 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 the Great Depression. But we don't seem to understand this issue. So that's the point we want to We want to get the point clear that we, we, our economy is on the wrong track. The, the basic capacities of the economy, the real capacity that enable the economy to grow does not exist. So all of the efforts we are trying to do is just to, we are just you know, carrying out wild experiments. And we are faced with a problem that is made complex by the hand of nature that you cannot achieve it by chance. So that's the first thing we need to understand. There are rules that guide economic development. So we, 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 are, we are into... The, 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 what I call the high point of our transition period. The first thing we need to do now is we must under, access and, and the alternative concept. That's the first thing we need to do. That's the first. Second is that we have to build this alternative concept to broad national engagement so we can upgrade our knowledge of what the real issues are so we can understand that. You can't understand the fundamental problem at the same knowledge level that created it. This is exactly the problem we are facing. It's not about the leadership or fellowship or the... Uh, <coughs> or, the, 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 the crisis in China and all of that. No, these are not issues. These are not the real issues. If we begin to focus on those issues, we, we will run into a bigger problem. We have a fundamental problem with the economy. And I, let, I like the way Professor Chukuma you know, raised the issue recently in Lagos. He said that you can't build an, a, 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 a duplex on the foundation of a, a bungalow. Nigeria economy is the primary economy. The local population has grown the, beyond the capacity of the primary capacity, uh, resources. So we need to get the economy to the next level. For you to do that, you need to change the foundation of the economy. And that, that the foundation of the economy, you need a new concept 
It is the concept that will define the context of a new system that will enable the economy to operate at a, new, a higher level above the primary resource wave so that the economy will not have the chances of expanding. Well, Dr. Anel At one point, we'll go around the circle. Do, yeah. Dr. Anel I mean, I, I get your point that we need to change our approach, right? Yes. We need to adopt what you call uh, that's, that's an alternative. The, that's the basic issue. Yes. You, we have to adopt an alternative uh, yes. uh, concept. And, you know, you are talking about human so, beings at the center of this, human capital capacity. The, the, the human being and the system, the system. Yes, but if you could the help us... That, that if you could, the human capital capacity to domestic... Yes, people. if you could help us break this down in specific terms. I know the UNDP doesn't just talk about security in uh, loose terms. It talks about food security, health security, economic security, yes. political security, community security, about, you know, six or seven categories like that. And if you look at successive governments in Nigeria, yes. despite your conviction that we don't have an economy, I mean, policies have been introduced, measures yes. have been taken to address each aspect of this uh, categorization by uh, the UNDP, relating again to the issue of human capital uh, capacity that you talk about. But if you want to break it down, what is it that we have not done? What is the content of that alternative concept that you are talking about in specific terms, in all of those areas that I, I pointed out that the UNDP had identified? Yes. Now, all of those parts we are talking about are the outer, what I call the outer layers of the economy. If you want to, uh, for instance, uh, you can see that uh, there are a lot of large-scale unemployment in our, in our economy, and this unemployment has created the security situations we have faced. You can see the political system is not working well. The policy system does not allow new ideas that will create domestic products. For instance, Nigeria does not have a single product in the global market. We depend entirely on crude oil. There's no way you can make progress with that kind of arrangement. So the starting point is for us to do is, and, and the biggest problem is that Nigerians are not helping, are not working in isolated with the government. Nigerians are antagonistic to the government, and so many people where, uh, are in so many places, they are sabotaging the effort of government. So there's no way you can work, you can say you want to develop an economy in such an environment. So the first thing we need to do is to help, to, we have to, there must be a broad national engagement that will help us understand the, pro the problem. So we can work on the same page. There's no way you can take any of the aspects of the economy or in isolation. You have to get the system right. The, the, base, the foundation of the economy is deficient. And let me make the point, it is not deficient because, because the government is not doing it right. No, that's not the point. By the arrangement of nature, there are three phases to economic development. One of the, and let me say, let me draw your attention to one thing I want, I want you to understand, so you can get the point, the angle from which I'm coming from. In 1986, the Academic Staff Union commissioned a, a, a team to look at the problem of Nigeria to find out exactly where the problem is. And they discovered that there's a problem with our development education. The education we have now does not contain any lesson on development or on economy. So we are not working on economy. We, we are working on economics. Because of the similarity of the two words, there's a tendency to confuse, to confuse the economy with economics. So any government that comes in will engage a team of economists to, to design a strategy to expand the domestic, to move the economy to the next level so that the economy is able to get more from the global economy to meet the extra needs of, to meet the basic needs of the economy. But this is an exercise that is not known to economics. But any group that's engaged to do the work will think or pretend that they know what to do. So as they go to work on the basis of that misconception, they end up creating problems. So 90% of the problems we are facing today are the complications that are built into the economy by the you know, wide experiments that the economists have been carrying out with the economy. So the first thing we need to do is to understand the economy and the, what does it take to develop it. So we, the society can play on the same page. The, the, the cost of running Nigerian government is far beyond the capacity of the economy. This has to be adjusted. We can't continue this way. So these are the points of So it's not something the government can do alone. There must be a framework for a broad national engagement. So we will understand the problem first, and then we now agree on how to address it. Then we can restructure the economy so the economy can take off. There's just no problem. It's a very simple thing. It's not a difficult thing to do. Because when you, when you begin to look at it from the outer layers of the economy, if you, if you begin to look at the boss from the body, leaving out the basic capacities that actually drive the body, you miss the point. So that's the point I'm trying to make.
Okay, thank you, Doctor. And certainly the point is clear. You said the first step is to understand the economy. And here I'd like to bring in the issue that we're now facing with foreign direct investments. A recent report showed that in quarter yes. four of last year, 27 states in Nigeria were left out of foreign direct investment completely. Really and truly, only Lagos and Abuja really received good amounts of foreign direct investments. In quarter two of last year, Nasarawa states only received $100,000 in foreign direct investment investment and received none at all in quarter one of foreign direct investment. So my question is, except for understanding the economy, what other practical steps do we need to start taking for us to get rid of the detrimental effects that all of this is having on the economy as a whole? What are the rest of the practical steps that we need to be looking at? Because these figures are really shocking. Now, now, now the, first place, the first question you, or you, I would like to ask is, are you, do you show that Nigeria needs all of this foreign investment beyond the, the areas of ex, export, uh, uh, the areas of the economy that are export oriented? Do you show we need foreign investment in all, all other sectors? I was part of Nigeria's uh, uh, the delegation to Geneva in 2009, where we went to do the, foreign, the investment policy review. And the UNCAD group in that, uh, uh, that met us there, they were living with anger asking us, what are we coming to Geneva to do? He said, we, we are looking for foreign investment. He said, what are you looking for foreign investment for? What we need to do is for every dollar of foreign investment that comes into sub Saharan Africa, a dollar and 60 cents flies out. This issue has been settled. So you can't build your economy on foreign investment. What you need to do is to create a system that will enable Nigerians to solve the problem. Every aspect of our problem we can solve, except those areas that have to do with the, the, the oil industry or some other industry that are export oriented. But we don't need all of this foreign investment because this foreign investment is actually shrinking the real economy. There's nothing we cannot do. That's why I say we need to understand the problem. We need to discuss it. You cannot, this, the, what we have is problem with the economy, not economics. If you get the economists to come and discuss the issue, they won't understand the issue, and then we'll continue to go on the wrong plane. So we don't actually well. need for the investment on all over all, all the areas. We need to develop the domestic capacity to do the things we can do for ourselves so that we can reduce the outflow of real resources that are, you know, that are not absolutely necessary. That's where we will have the strength to even get our fair share of the global resources. Well, we need Dr. to go, compete beyond our own economy. Dr. But first of all, we need to de develop the domestic capacity to do the things we can do for ourselves. Well, Dr. Need, the, 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 these are the, some of the issues that they made from the studies others did for us. We don't need all these foreign investments. We need to develop our the, the problem in our society are tremendous opportunity for us to get the economy. Well, Dr. Uh, Anole, the, uh, we'll, be, we'll be running this up, just, you know, in a yeah. matter of uh, minutes, but I don't think many people even laymen will agree with you that, you know, an economy that wants to grow does not need uh, foreign, foreign investment. Events, that would be some kind of island, uh, you know, isolationist approach mm -hmm. uh, to the uh, economic question. But, but, even but, but big Ruben, economies, Ruben, even big economies Ruben, Ruben, invite, Ruben, ask for investment. Ruben, Ruben. Yes. Ruben, can, I, can I ask you just a simple question? Yes. Okay. Are you aware that on, on these studies I'm talking about that the, the, the UNCTA did a study on the impact of foreign investment in sub-Saharan Africa? Now, are, are you aware of that study or the outcome of that study? What does this the study say? Are you aware what of is the outcome? That you don't need that, foreign that direct investment. Foreign investment that for, comes into sub uh, for every dollar of foreign investment that comes into sub-Saharan Africa, that a dollar and six cents flies out. And that amounts to net transfer of real resources out of sub-Saharan Africa to the rest of the world. And the UNCTAD advised us to develop our own domestic, domestic capacity to do the things we can do for ourselves so that we are able to sustain a, a growth that can be sustainable. You can't build foreign investment if foreign investment are not charity. There are things that come in to take business you, you have out of their, their, their economy. You need to develop the capacity to do the things we can do for ourselves. And we can do so many things. The only thing is that the ministries and those who are in control of the policy process do not allow new ideas to come in. That's anyway, what the problem is. Dr. And Anne, they know they can't do so, Dr. They, they can't. Well, I mean, uh, you know, thank you. I'm sure some of the points you have raised would, uh, you know, generate debates and controversies. Certainly. Particularly also your point about broad national engagement. I don't imagine that in planning the economy, uh, it's a thing for you know, laymen and uh, all kinds of uh, people. And there are existing platforms, the Nigerian Economic Society, the Nigerian Economic uh, Summit, and all kinds of annual events. We even have an Economic Advisory Council, Council. recently set up by the president. We have the, uh, you know, the uh, body, the National Economic uh, Council, that is chaired by uh, the vice president. So it's not as if all these issues are, you know, rocket science. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you are a philosopher. 
So you, your economic philosophy may be different from what we know. But thank you very much thank for, you for coming us, to the Dr. morning show. Thank you very much indeed.